between the episodes on Eisenhold. With bacon on the brain and our palate primed for pork, I set out to gather materials for our swine sanctuary. What resource could I possibly be gathering, you ask? Why, none other than every Canadian's favorite, Maple Wood! With copious cuts of majestic maple secured, there's no way our copper saw could be up to the task in its current state. So it was off to the forge to process one of our iron blooms into a shiny new iron saw. Wood processing was secure, so the only other matter left to attend to was the foundation. We're going with sandstone on this one for a splash of brightness. And that brings us to today, where we're going to get as much of this barn done as serifly possible. And if we're lucky, we might even grab ourselves a piggy or two. But we'll see how that plays out. So first of all, let's get some of this dirt out of the way as I've got the sandstone cobblestone blocks that we're going to use for the base foundation of everything here. So let's just start with getting some of the uh, corners all ready. I think this section here we're going to bring out a little bit just to give a slightly larger footprint, especially if we're going to have an entirely different animal type in here. Uh, this little area is a bit small. A couple extra blocks will give us just a bit more space. Oh, there goes that shovel. Let's grab the other one. Right, tool racks. <laughs> I've been using them. So let's just get a small segment of this in place to give you a taste of what the plan is here. And there we go. That's as simple. That's all we're doing. Nah. We're going to chisel this up, make it fancy, and... I figured out the issue I was having with support beams. There's been a number of people in the comments that have been asking why I haven't been using support beams for any of the buildings so far. And I was having a little crazy issue where every time I was testing it out in creative, I would have a little uh, lack of hitboxes on any of the beams. If I misplaced one, there would be no hitbox in order to get rid of it. And if I switched to uh, breaking the block in hopes of getting rid of it, that also would not get rid of it, and then it had no hitbox still, and I could never delete that floating beam from the world. I don't know what fixed it, or if I'm doing something different now, but I tested it out in a creative world, and I seem to be able to uh, get rid of them. As long as I don't have a beam in my hand, then the beams I've placed have hitboxes and also seem to break when I break the blocks that they're connected to. So we're gonna do a little bit of uh, fensification here. And of course, we're gonna have pigs in here, and pigs mean bacon. What's better than just bacon? Maple bacon. We're just gonna give ourselves a good old Canadian uh, maple bacon farm here, eh? Oh, for sure, eh, there, bud. So I think for getting this old shindig all put together, let's get ourselves into a good old time lapse there, eh? Just sit yourself back right there with a slice of Canadian bacon and a double double from Tim's, and we'll get right on this, eh? Wah.
And here we have the beginnings all set in place. So this part here, just to my right but screen left, isn't going to have the stone foundation because it's going to be a little bit of a build out, almost looking like a bit of an extension that was put on after the fact. Now we are going to have to get ourselves a door in place. And I've been planning on having three high doors here, so we are going to have to make a couple of nails and strips, as well as just a set of regular double doors right here. So I've adapted this design from Odd Ape's Pig Sorter, made it a little bit smaller of a footprint, and taken a couple of the other steps out of it. So we'll have a couple of troughs in here to feed the pigs. And now the fully grown pigs are going to be a little too big to fall down these holes, but the babies will fall right in, and then they'll kind of grow up down here. We'll get a bit different of a floor in here. Maybe something that looks softer for their landing, but I'm not too concerned about the inside. And so once they're grown, they'll be allowed to come up the stairs, and after we've removed the previous generation, should there be both a boar and a sow in that litter down there, we'll bring them on up here after uh, processing the parents. That's what we'll go with. We'll call it processing. Yeah. <laughs> Surely nothing else is going on with these pigs. Just processing. Like, paperwork and stuff. <laughs> but they'll be drawn up the stairs to the troughs for feeding, and the cycle begins again. Now, why did we build this so long if we're only using this section for pigs? Well, this side here, once I get it a little bit more prettied up and get the floor in, is going to be our sections here for goats and sheep. One will be for one, the other will be for the other. I haven't quite decided which one will be which just yet. And did I accidentally make that line up perfectly? I did. Aha. So that way we'll have one solid building for both our sheep, goats, and pigs. And we'll pretty up the rest of the exterior here. I just wanted to get at least a sample of what this will all look like when it's done. Slate roofing, we will go up to a peak, but the very tip of the peak, we might actually use some uh, stripped maple logs. Depends on how I'm feeling when that's all done and dusted up there. Now, one other thing I'm realizing is I've built this one block higher than I initially intended, which isn't the biggest problem. It's just a little taller than I, uh, than I had planned for. Now, with using these beams, as we can see, we've got a little uh, two voxel thick kind of facing for the sandstone here. And that's the exact depth that we see of this exposed beam. But here we can see the beam is actually four voxels. So these support beams are four by four, well, beams. And they always attach to the outer edge of a block. So here it has half of it recessed in and it's giving us this really nice trim look. A little bit of Z fighting going on, but that's okay. And these hitboxes are the things I wasn't seeing before. Uh, do I have any more? I do. Because when you're holding one, you can't see the hitboxes while you're holding a support beam, but the second you hold something else, then they, uh, they, they appear. And that's where I was going wrong in all of my testing. So, uh, we're getting some weird shadows on the wall there. Ugh. There we go. Let's get rid of those. <laughs> So I'm going to get these doors put together and maybe finish the back wall right here just to enclose the pig area so that we'll be ready after we put a couple troughs in as well to get some little piggies in here. So I'll see you in a moment when that's all done and dusted. There we go. Got them back in place now, and now we have ourselves a little uh, room for the troughs here. And what I can do is on the side wall out here, I can chisel in something to be able to access the troughs from outside. 
because when there's little babies in the area, even if they do fall down here, the adult pigs up here are going to become uh, a little aggressive. So I might turn a couple of these into uh, little access panels, either by having just a, a slit in the block or maybe even just a full trap door or something like that. So, the more I look at this, the more I think it is a little too tall. I did want this door to pretty much take up the entire height of the building, uh, at least up until the edge of the roof, so I think I might actually lower this down by a block, which does mean I have to replace uh, every beam, but luckily I only did this front side here, so we're not, uh, not having to redo too much. Give me just the briefest of moments, and I'm just going to lower this. And there we go. Now, I think that's looking a lot better at this height. Gives it a lot more of a cozy feel. And when we come in, we'll have our roof. Well, we'll probably see into the uh, ceiling itself, so we might make some rafters, maybe uh, some diagonal wood blocks. I'm not too concerned about the interior look in here, though. We're mainly going to see the outside apart from when we come in just to slaughter pigs. So, I mean, process. We're processing the, the pigs. Yeah. So, we're just going to set up our roof peak here just so we've got a good guideline for it. And then... Up top here on the peak, instead of a slate roof ridge, we're just going to have a stripped maple beam. Well, stripped maple log, not not the beams we've been using down there, but an actual log, just going across. And we might have that section there have a slightly different roof, maybe a custom chiseled one. Ow, my ankles. Okay. Let's get a little bit more fleshed out land here. We'll probably add some steps just to slope up to it a little bit more smoothly. And while we're at it, the little basin that I said we were going to fill in, let's just fill that in right now just to get that over and done with. Starting to look pretty good. A little bit flatter landscape back here. That's nice. All right. Now, this segment of the barn here, I think we're just going to cut it off here. As much as I said I wanted it to be a little bit longer, if we're going to have it kind of connected into here, I don't think we're going to have to worry about it being that one extra block long, because we might knock out most of this wall and probably just have this be either one big open area or an area with a, a pass-through between them. I'm not too sure yet. And that's not looking too bad for Maple, if I do say so myself. Now, what I might do with this roof ridge here, as I begin to shiver ever so slightly, is if I were to place a block here. So let's get rid of this top one here. If I place one along here, and say these are debarked maple logs, for example, have them facing, uh, you know, running along horizontally like so. If I put it here and then chisel away most of it, I could create a nice wooden trim right along the edge of the roof tiles and then just use more support beams going diagonally up the sides. And that way we give ourselves a nice little bit of wood trim around the slate. Without it being, you know, an entire block or having to chisel something to try and match the roof tiles. I think it'll look pretty nice. But for the time being, the main thing of import is that we have our interior pretty much at the bare minimum of ready to go, along with our a uh, little baby canch basin. And now that we have the interior there all in place, the roof we can get on when we get it on. But it's not going to be 
absolutely necessary before we get our animals in. So I think once again we're just going to have to uh, toast our buns a little bit on the fire before we go on a little bit of an exploration mission. One last bun toast for the road. Okay. We are now on a little bit of a mission. Let's go check on those cattails down by the, well, frozen water. We're doing using a knife when we got a scythe. Oh. Come here, you beautiful scythe. We're going to use you for what nature intended. Ho, 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 ho. Oh, this is so much quicker. Oh, look at that. Now, the fact that our big bundle of cattails is not quite a full stack, uh, I, um, I feel like we need to rectify that at some point. I think once we have a chance, we're going to have to amalgamate more of our cattails all into one spot. But now, we have ourselves three basket traps. So I think it's time to try to capture ourselves some piggies. Gonna grab some of the flax grain that we've got in the house over here, because we are not gonna be eating that. That is going to be pig food. But first, it'll be pig bait. Pop that scythe back down. We don't need that where we're going. Look at that. Three trap, three flax. Now we may need more flax at some point. Speaking of needing more flax, we're going to need more uh, food in general right now because we are going a little hungry. That's a lot of flax grain. You know what? I'll bring extra just in case. Because those pigs might be crafty. Let's, let's add some soybeans into our food. Yep, yeah, yeah, I get it. Yeah, I know. Oh, boy, do I know. Mm-hmm. I waited too long. I'm screaming in hunger. Ah. I can scream all I want. It won't make it cook any faster. Come now. A watched pot never boils. This is your friendly PSA to remember uh, to eat before you're starving. And don't mind what the sink's doing in the background there. Pay no attention to it. Just listen to my cries of anguish. The sooner we catch some pigs, the sooner we can get ourselves a little bit more sustainable food than these veggies. I long for the days where a single bowl can fill a man's belly. You know what? We might be staking it out a little bit. Let's bring a couple, uh, couple of these crocs with us. They're going to be good. Well, we'll find out how long they'll be good for. So we will want to pack light for this journey. Oh boy. Lighter than we are. So the reason I took off a couple of backpacks here is because each of these reed basket traps, right now they sit in our inventory. But if there's an animal inside, they take up a, an inventory expansion slot. Pretty much like a populated skep. So we're going to head out off into the world. Where did I leave the raft? Is that back at the workshop? <laughs> uh oh. Dude, where's my boat? Ah. Uh... Raft? Raft? Ah, I hid it inside of a box. Well, let's uh, rectify that situation. There we go. Now, with it being a nice, calm night, we're going to head off in search of some pigs and hopefully come across them by sunrise. Once we've located them, we'll lay our traps and hope for the best. I don't know if staking out the area is going to be an effective method or not, but we're going to find out. Because once the little baby piggies are trapped, they're only going to survive for a 
stay inside of our traps before they, um, uh, you know, just stop. <laughs> yeah. We're doing the standing thing again. So, uh, we like to live dangerously. Now, if I remember correctly, I think I recall seeing some pigs somewhere over where we found Slate. So we're going to try over there. It's a bit of a trek, but we'll be okay. We're just going to skirt the coastline and see if we can hear any pigs. Ah, and the night has just become medium. Haha, <laughs> safety is no longer guaranteed. Though was it ever really? The answer is no. This is a weird perspective. You know, I've heard the saying, my eyes are bigger than my stomach, but I think, uh... The saying that my eyes are in my stomach is not a, not a common colloquialism. But it is indeed what we're experiencing. Hello, raccoon. Let's uh, pop ourselves onto the land here and just see if we can fix... Yeah, there we go. Fix our seating situation. Now we're properly aligned. Ooh. Oh boy, alright, here we go. Hey, get. Get. Bad dog. That's right, you better run. Hmm. Probably not going to be many pigs around here if we got dogs. Okay, we have a live rabbit. That's a good sign that maybe it's a little safer out here. Ah, I have explored this ruin. All right. What is that? Is that a... What are these? Ah, deer. Okay. Well, while deer are a source of red meat, they are not what we're looking for right now. So you're safe for another... Oh, that was in the game. You do sound like just somebody screaming. Okay. Spooky. Spooky sounding. I ignored it when I first heard it, because I thought it was just somebody sneezing or making a sound elsewhere in the house, but... The fact that that's a type of deer... Uh, not gonna lie, I'd be terrified if I heard that in the middle of the night. Out in the woods. This exact scenario that I'm in. Ooh. Copper. It's not what we're looking for right now, but we'll mark it anyway. Let's maybe try and stick a little closer to the coast. and Hope for the best here. I'd like to hopefully find pigs somewhere we can easily access again and you know get to and from with some sort of relative swiftness especially since we'll be on the on the clock once we've captured one I'm just waiting for that all familiar little squealing piggies here yeah, piggy piggy hey, little pigs where you at nah I thought you were a piglet just raccoon, you rhyme with doom. Oh, don't be tempted. I'm being tempted. Okay. Yep, we're going in a cave. Nothing about this is a good idea. Also, I think I saw a green glow. There's probably locusts. Oh, boy. Ooh, is that a... Nope, leave me alone, good sir. This isn't the way I came in. Here we go. Oh, 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 oh boy, I'll I'll mark I'll mark the entrance of this. But uh, yeah, no, no, we're uh, we're we're busy. We're trying to find pigs. Gotta stop getting distracted. Going down in a cave on a medium night when I'm on a pig hunting mission. Come on, get your head in the game, man. Yeah, let's get out of here. Back back towards the the shoreline a little bit. <laughs> it's another cave. Don't go down there. You know better. Not having much luck coming across pigs. 
And I'm getting a little farther away than I would prefer. So I think instead of trying around here, what if we take a look in the forested area and around here, a little bit closer and connect it to home, so we can just kind of walk. Or even what, around, what about around here? Just on the other side of the mountain. At least when we start looking for goats, I remember on our shale island over there, that's where we found copper. That is probably where we're going to go to find some goats. If they, uh, if they still spawn over there. However, I took out a few of them. Maybe we'll go take a look-see. See if something else has spawned in their place. Because I don't think it's relegated to it being a particular goat spawning area. I think it's just all based on climate, what animals will and won't spawn. Ah, I moistened my toes. Parkour! Parkour! There's only one spot on the uh, entire shale island that I remember seeing any animals, and it's that exact little cliffy type area where I saw the goats. So we're going to give that a little look-see here. And with the sun coming up, we have a little bit better visibility. We're starting to shiver a little bit, but I can just head back into uh, where Oliver is to warm up a little bit using the campfire there. But this is where I took out some goats before. Not seeing hide nor hair of anything. It's looking a little devoid of life out here. Pigs? Goats? Anybody? Uh, hey Oliver, you wouldn't happen to have a... Like a torch just kind of sitting out somewhere, would you? No? I haven't had to make one of these in a while. <gasps> one piece of grass, two sticks. I got that. Yeah, we're going old school today. Oh. Oh. Warm me. Warm me, fire. Ah, oh, beautiful. We've warmed up. We've staved off hypothermia, and we live another day. So, while well, we've got a little bit more warmth here, let's just check the map here. So, I don't think this entire island is going to be much use at all to us, considering the only area where we'd seen animals was goats earlier in this forested area. Thank you, Oliver. But there's nothing there now. So I think checking the forest to the west of our homestead is probably going to be for the best. We could maybe check... No, we started over there, so there's nothing there. Yeah. Let's pop our way over there, just see if we can find any pigs. And it's daytime, so we won't need our lantern, so we can save ourselves a little bit of hunger. Maybe, uh... Grab a little bite to eat once we hit land again. I think we'll skirt around the northern side, just check the uh, the coastline along here for any signs of pigs, and then dip into the forest in here. And with any luck, hopefully, maybe, fingers crossed, maybe we'll find our Canadian maple bacon there, eh? Oh, let's hope. A man can only survive for so long on just, uh, grain and vegetables, eh? We got no fruit here in the, uh, in the dead of winter, so we're gonna have to find ourselves a good old source of protein. Oh, I could go for a poutine right now. But just while we're skirting around the northern side, I'm fairly certain that grotto or a little inlet in there. Maybe cuts all the way through to our little reservoir there? You know, if it doesn't, I think we should make it do it. One day. That's not a project for today. But eventually, when we're working on the castle, we can have this be like a, a back dock to uh, just head out straight to the north. Make a little canal under the mountain. Going on this little hunt in the winter might not be the most productive time. Spring. Spring would probably be the smarter time to do this. But we press on. 
in search of bacon. Did I see movement there, or do my eyes deceive me? Very likely my eyes deceived me, and it was probably just the trunk of a tree or a bit of a change of lighting. But we shall find out. With me, Raft. Ha! <laughs> uh oh, we're on a bit of a time crunch now. I'm gonna get back and sleep through that temporal storm. We got a big old oak tree there. That's kind of nice. Hmm. Got some more little raccoons here, but still no sign of my bacon. Let's start making our way back home here in preparation for the storm. And we'll take another crack at finding pigs afterward. Just keeping my eyes peeled on the coastline. Now if I miss it, if you spot any pigs that I have missed, please let me know. There's a rooster. Get out of the water. I want to capture you later. And we're back into very familiar territory. I don't think we're going to find any pigs here. If one just spawned right on our doorstep, that would be exceedingly unlikely. But it would save us so much time. So I'm just going to take my raft here into bed and sleep through this temporal storm. What do you mean that's weird to sleep with a boat? It... Do, you... do you not have a teddy raft? A rafty bear? A bunch of logs and rope to cuddle through the night? Just me? Okay. Well. Suit yourself. They provide great lumber support. Yeah, I'll see myself out. Did not find pigs to nor fro. He did not find pigs above nor below. He did not find pigs anywhere. There was no sign, not hide nor hair. Uh, let's check down in Turnip Valley. That might be a good place to look. Looking for any little bits of movement. Chickens! I found. So many chickens, and no, no pigs. No, not even a single pig. I did not find them on the plains. He did not find them by the grains. Oh, that's more rabbit. One of these days, I'll find something that's not another rabbit. Ah, dogs going to chase me in order to consume the giblets of meat that comprise my body. <gasps> Crimson maple seed. We're going to get ourselves a red maple leaf tree here. Oh, it's going to be beautiful, eh? Going to get ourselves a good old, good old Canadian maple right there. Oh, it is getting a little bit of lag. There's a part of me that wants to give up on the pigs. And just grab one of the plethora of chickens that we have come across. 
But what kind of Canadian would I be if I gave up on the bacon? I like how I've come out here in search of renewable meat, and all I'm finding is grain and veggies. I don't want that spelt I've got. I'll take it. I'll take it anyway. Honestly, if I wanted to just take some chickens home, I very much could. I've come across enough chickens to well, pretty much make an industrial-sized chicken farm. The open plains. There's got to be at least one pig around here somewhere. One would hope. A ruin. Ooh. What have we here? Just gonna take your foundation here, sir. Your uh, your aged blocks. I'm desecrating your gravesite here. I'm, I'm looking for pigs, man. You seen any uh, seen any little little piglets running around? No. All right. Well, let's put the food in there. So we're just gonna take this storage vessel, pop it on our back there. Now we got ourselves a nice, neat little storage vessel right on our back. Okay, let's get out of here. Hello, sir. You live very far out here. Rigby the luxuries trader. I'm a luxurious boy. What do you have? Resonator. A silver felx. Very fancy, very fancy, very fancy shield. Nice, nice. Aristocrat shirt. Hmm. Gold lantern. These are very fancy things, my good sir. If I ever find fancy things, I shall bring them to you. Yeah, you uh, you have fun living all by your lonesome out here with no pigs in sight. All right. Well, start trekking home. You know, when I'm looking at it like this, it doesn't look like we've actually gone all that far. We could probably get back home pretty quick. Should we make another little stop? Maybe check over here. Okay, we're gonna do like a meandering path back. And if there's no pigs, uh, we'll shift priorities. But otherwise, if there's even a hint of pig, ooh, suey, I say. I wonder. If I start taking out every rabbit I find, Will other things spawn in their place? Truly spring is on the way. Butterfly in the sky. I can go twice as high. Take a look. It's in a book. Reading rainbow. I can do anything except find pigs. <gasps> I found them. Oh my god. I finally found pigs. Okay. Do you have babies? Or is it just the two of you? You're not immediately aggressive. You guys don't have babies yet. Can I trap you two? Uh, Alright, little pigs. I'm going to build you guys a little, uh, little bungalow. Okay. Can you go into this little bungalow I've built for you? It's, um... No, no come on. Come on. Be, be a bro. Just go on in there. Mitchell, it, there's, it's a free house. I got the keys right here. It's ready and waiting. It's free real estate. Come on. Come on. Not going to hold these keys all day, man. Come on. Come on. It's a free house. Thank you. Okay, little Sal. Little Sal. Your, um, your, your, your husband. All right. Haha. -ha. There we go. This could be a slightly longer term project. Did not bring anything to make stuff with, but we have a trader right there. This is perfect. I'm just going to remove that waypoint and right here. Yeah, I get it. Drifters, I understand you're here. Yes. Do not knock me in there. No, nope, no, nope, you're not allowed. Sir. All right. But in any case, they are in there. So, I can make them have little babies. And then, 
once they've had their little babies, and uh, Uncle Drifty is uh, done roaming around there. Ow. He likes to play baseball. Once they've had their kids, I can then put the... Step away a little bit more. I can put a trap down there to take some of their piglets. They've had their piglets. Um... Okay. Uncle Drifty is gonna have to go away now because he is out after curfew. This requires precision. I cannot hit the baby. There we go. Uncle Drifty has been taken care of. I understand you're not gonna be happy with my existence, little baby pig. Or m mommy and daddy pig. Okay. Okay. The trap is in place. Let's go hang out with uh, with old Duder McDuderson here. Hello, survival goods trader. I might need to use your basket here just to uh, place a few of my things. Anyway, let's grab a little snack. And we will see if a little baby pig has found its way into our trap. That doesn't sound like it. Ah. We're going to rinse and repeat this process uh, until I run out of grain or until this little piglet gets into a crate. Think little piglets. Your mom and dad aren't happy. But piglets, I think, have a higher chance of not being trapped in the uh, little reed basket traps because they're slightly stronger than chickens. Now, it's only the one naturally spawned little baby so there's no real chance that we're going to have enough pigs just from this one instance so I probably will still have to occasionally come back here breed up those pigs and take some from the new batch it's our uh, the Adam and Eve of bacon one might say <gasps> contains a frightened piglet oh ho oh, oh, ho oh. ho all right. We've got it. It's going to be alive for 23.72 more hours. All right. Mom pig and dad pig. We'll, uh, we're going to need some names for these ones. Post your name suggestions as I kidnap their child in the comment section below. Let's get this little guy home. Uh, hello, chickens. We can come back here to steal some chickens, too. What do we got? There's more carrots. We'll get those on the way back. <laughs> We are on a time crunch now. And how far do we have to go? So we've just got to go just a straight shot across the land there and right to home. Ah. The sweet taste of salty, porky victory. Tastes good. Like bacon. So unless I can find more pigs at some point, I can keep trying elsewhere over by where we found those two those might be oh, 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 oh that's deep down those might be the only two pigs that we're going to find for a little while anyway so the plan is going to be to basically just use them as the progenitors of our entire pig population so i'll have to make frequent trips over there bring a trough and once the first litter comes out, which is going to take like 25 days, so uh, unless I find another piglet to abscond with that happens to be a boar or a sow or the opposite of whatever this one is, eh, this could be a little bit of a time-consuming process. What I will very likely do is, in the meantime, capture at least a rooster and a hen from one of the various chicken populations that we've come across build ourselves a little bit of a chicken coop slightly earlier than I expected to. However, uh, probably just about when we're going to need it. We gotta get our protein in somehow and, you know, eggs and maybe the occasional bit of poultry might not be the worst thing. There are a lot of rabbits and raccoons though. So I might hunt a lot of these rabbits down between the episodes just to see if that frees up the spawn cap 
Because if that works the way I expect it to, then we might have a better chance of finding pigs a little closer to home. Hey, we got a chicken right there. Let's scare you more inland. Can we chase you to the house? I'm just going to try and chase this chicken right into the farmhouse. Go. Go, go, go. Yeah. Go to go to my house. It's warm in there. You'll you'll be happy. You'll you'll be fed. Uh, I'll I'll just eat your eggs, but I won't uh, I won't eat you yet. <laughs> yes, chicken. You're mine now. You live in my house. You're my you're, you're my dog. All right. Well, we have a house chicken now. Okay, this went well. So we won't even have to go out for half of our chicken supply. If I can find a rooster and chase them here, then uh, we'll be all good. Yeah. All right, let's get this pig in uh, into the barn before it suffocates. Okay, little piggy boy or girl or whatever you are. You're just a baby. Let's get you in here. Let's close the door. You got snow in here. I hope you like snow. There you go, little baby. Are you going to fall down a hole? You're not falling down it. There you go. So that's kind of how the mechanic works, where basically the big pigs are a little too big to fall down there, and then the little baby pigs are going to fall down the hole. And eventually, eventually, I'll lure them back upstairs with promises of food. I think for now, since we don't have a chicken coop, we're just going to let this chicken uh, lay eggs in the kitchen. You know, it's, it's a house chicken. Everything will be okay. So, we'll probably just... How, how about just there? Huh? Do you like that? Yeah? When we're out and about, you'll, uh, you'll lay some eggs for us, maybe? Yeah? Thank you. There should be enough light in here to keep the, the chicken alive. There you go. Here's some grain for you. Chicken's just roaming around, making herself at home. Hey, hey, eating from the trough. We're gonna have ourselves some eggs. Perfect. So, one last order of business here. If we're going to have the main stable here, which I'll finish putting together the backside of. Where is our coop gonna be? Now, if we have it here, and there's a small valley, if we level out this little hill here, which is not actually as little as I expected it to be, if we level this part out here, we could build it here, or should we build it right there? Hmm, decisions, decisions. Maybe about here. Kind of uh, encircle everything, and then have something else here. Maybe the road coming in or out. Yeah. Once everything starts to melt, we'll get a better idea of how this will look with our little pond here as well. But right about here, might have to push this back a bit. But uh, we're going to have ourselves a little chicken coop. By little, I mean like... Probably it will end up being about a 7x7, seven seven, technically, with a 5x5 uh, five five interior. Or maybe a 3x5. So it'll become a 5x7 exterior. You know what? Let's, uh... Let's get this in place. Alright, let's get just at least the, uh, the pegs for the footprint of this in. So, I'm going to want at least a couple spaces of flat ground here. So, I'd say... Maybe starting around here. Yeah. And then we'll give it a little bit of space there. One, two, three, four, five. There. That's going to sit right there. Then we'll probably want to just fill up the ground a little bit around it. <laughs> okay. And what we'll want to do is just break it in a little bit just to have the feet slightly recessed this is going to be a raised coop I don't know if there's a particular technical name for it there probably is gonna make a few slabs 
And what I'll do is add a slab into each one. There we are, and then we'll have a little staircase that goes up to it, and I might have to fill in the ground ever so slightly right here. But then the chickens will have a nice little ramp to get up into there, and we'll have just tiny slots around the edges to be able to basically pull out any of their, their eggs. So, that'll be about the footprint for it. I might thin down the uh, the platform a little bit, just to maybe like two voxels, just to have it look a little bit more like it's a sheet of planks. And then we can technically get underneath of it and maybe have a little hatch to uh, go up there and sneakily take the eggs. But who knows? I'll play around with a couple designs. This is a little uh, sooner than I was expecting to have to make it. I was hoping and banking on the pigs going very smoothly and, well... They weren't the smoothest thing in the world. But we've got one. And we've got a chicken. So life is going pretty good on the food front, or at least the beginnings of it. And hopefully by spring, we'll have a few eggs in our pockets and a dream in our heart. So let's uh, mosey on back into the house before we start to freeze a little toes off. <gasps> we got our first egg. We're going to pop you down in the cellar. How long are you good for, egg? We got five days in our inventory. 41 days in the basement. Excellent. All right. Well, with that, I think we've chased chickens and pigs long enough today. So I think I'm going to end the episode here. Between the episodes, I'll get to work on finishing up the stable's exterior as well as uh, putting the little chicken coop together. And then... After we've prepped those pigs to start making a few more babies for us to abscond with, we're going to be well underway at getting back into spring. Which means lots of terraforming, planning out where all the other builds are going to go, maybe getting some roads in place. We do have a decent bit of stone. We might have to go quarry out some more just to make a bunch of paths. But, very productive episode, I think. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'd like to give a special shout out to all of our channel members. You are all so fantastic. Thank you so much for all the support. Well, I'll see you all next episode when we start to get this town a little bit more put down on paper. Or dirt. Yeah, put down on dirt. <laughs> all right. You have a good one. Bye-bye. Oh, I'm going to get you. Oh, I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. I wish I could name you. <laughs>